Zwom. Bima. Sasquatch. From the Salish word Sesek, or meaning wild man, also called Bigfoot, is a large, hairy, human-like creature believed by some people to exist in the northwestern United States and western Canada. It seems to represent the North American counterpart of the Himalayan region's mythical monster, the Abominable Snowman, or Yeti. The legends of Bigfoot-like creatures actually go back far beyond recorded history and cover the world. Basically, every human culture on Earth has ancient cave paintings and a legend of these creatures and cultural names for them. Names like the Alma, Almasti, Anasau, Barmanu, Babanguli, Boogers, Surakawa, Chuchuna, Dulagahi, Ngeku, Guju, Grassman, Hoodoo, Kakundak, Mandiborong, Nolem, Nukluk, Oma, Rock Ape, Skunk Ape, Wild Man, and Yeren. Although the name Bigfoot is generally attributed to the mountainous western region of North America, the Hoopa Indians of Northern California refer to Alma. Other nations tell of a large creature, much like a man but imbued with special powers and characteristics. Tribes of Northern Plains believed the Rugaru appeared in times of danger, and in other nations, the hairy apparitions are said to be messengers of warning, telling man to change his ways. In North America alone, and particularly the Northwest, you can find documented reports, stories, myths, and legends of 7 to 15 foot tall hairy beings stalking the woods, occasionally scaring hunters, campers, lumberjacks, hikers, and homeowners that happen to live in or near heavily forested areas. North American settlers started reported sightings during the late 1800s and into the 1900s with the occasional finding of footprints, sporadic encounters, and even a few grainy photos and videos adding to the mystery. The British explorer David Thompson is sometimes credited with the first discovery in 1811 of a set of Sasquatch footprints while searching out a waterway from the Hudson Bay to the Columbia River, and hundreds of alleged prints have been spotted or created since then. Visual sightings and even alleged photographs and filmings have also contributed to the legend, though none of the purported evidence has been verified. Those who claim to have seen Bigfoot have described everything from a large upright ape since 1902 when the mountain gorilla was discovered to be real, to an actual hairy human powerfully built. Sasquatch is variably described as a primate ranging from, again, 6 to 15 feet tall, having varied colors of hair from black to light gray, often giving off a foul smell and either moving silently or emitting a high-pitched cry. Footprints have measured up to 24 inches in length and 8 inches in width. Suggestions have been made that Sasquatch and his Siberian counterpart could be remnant of giant gorilla species or even Neanderthals, but most scientists do not recognize the creature's existence at all. Here are a few recent stories that can easily be looked up on YouTube about sightings, photos, and videos. Theodore Roosevelt wrote about a Bigfoot encounter he was told by a mountain man named Bowman in The Wilderness Hunter. That's an 1893 memoir the president wrote about his adventures at the frontier. It's a scary story, really, about a wild man attacking trappers. Arguably, the most famous and influential Bigfoot footage is the 1967 film shot by Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin in Northern California. The creature in the footage has been parodied by many, but never truly replicated. It's also said that in the footage, you can see a sagittal crest or a large bone ridge on the head of the creature, much like a gorilla's head. I thought it looked like a top knot of tied hair that draped down the shoulders. You watch the footage and make your own conclusion. You can find 
Frank Hansen's Minnesota Iceman and see the photos and read all about this creature that was shot and frozen in ice and displayed. Hansen came up with at least four fake fantastical stories of where the creature actually came from. Was it real? After being investigated by scientists Bernard Huvelman and Evan Sanderson, who were then convinced it was real and wrote official papers on the specimen, the owner took it to Canada and came back with a replica for fear of being convicted of murder, poaching, and the possible illegal transport of a dead body from Vietnam. Supposedly, no one knows what happened to the actual specimen or how the replica was paid for or who even made it. June 2001, Jim Mills, the leader of the youth group Campus Life, on the annual Marble Mountains backpacking trip, noticed a strange looking creature skulking along a ridge nearby. He filmed it for nearly seven minutes, making the somewhat grainy footage the longest video of an alleged Bigfoot sighting. British explorer Eric Earl Shipton snapped his footprint photo while trekking through the Himalayas in 1951, alleging that the footprint belonged to a Yeti. These prints were over 13 inches long and went on for well over a mile when the team stopped following them at an altitude of around 18,000 feet. In 2014, Christie's Auction House in London capitalized on the worldwide interest in Bigfoot and sold the original photo for thousands of dollars. In 2007, hunter Rick Jacobs captured some of the most famous Bigfoot images to date with a camera mounted to a tree in Pennsylvania, one of Pennsylvania's national forests. His camera also captured clear photos of bear cubs and other animals offering evidence that the unidentified animal was not a bear. But skeptics believe the animal is just a bear sick with mange. In 1994, former U.S. Forest Patrolman Paul Freeman claimed he saw a family of Bigfoot in Washington's Blue Mountains. The video is shaky and grainy, but has been deemed the real deal by so-styled Bigfoot experts. Mississippi resident Josh Highcliffe captured video of his potential Bigfoot while hunting on his own property in 2013. Afraid to go back to the woods, he posted the footage to YouTube asking for help to identify the animal or for the pranksters to come forward and admit it. Entire organizations now exist to study the doc and document Bigfoot and prove its existence, and groups regularly search woods, jungles, and forests looking for proof. I must say that the stories from the original indigenous cultures are much cooler and more spiritual, but also down to earth trading trapped furs for fish with Sasquatch species or fighting with them for land rights like they are just another tribe of men. It's when the modern white settlers get involved in their tellings that the stories become goofy or horrifying. The beings quickly go from being just another tribe or woodland spirit to monsters like the stories of Ape Canyon and the abandoned town of Port Lock, Alaska, which was abandoned due to a creature called the Nantina attacking, according to legend. What inspires me about Bigfoot is that if they are real, then they have openly chosen to reject what it is to be a, finger quotes here, civilized human, and to remain in the wilderness as free spirits. If they are not real, they represent the fact that we do not have control of everything in nature like we think we do, and that nature is much more than we may ever know. Because of the fun and stigma of the Bigfoot name, people have started calling them forest-dwelling hunter-gatherers, of which there are still today many known human tribes. Other than Bigfoot's size and hairiness, according to reported sightings, they have superpowers compared to humans. Enhanced agility, dexterity, durability, 
enhanced endurance, reflexes, senses, enhanced speed, strength, and stealth. Claims have been made that they emit a smell that causes immediate revulsion and clouded thought like a skunk. They also can let out a roar or specifically pitch sounds that cause disorientation and fear and can disappear at will in the woods. My opinion is that if these species are real, then with even the intelligence of an eight-year-old human who has lived in the woods their whole life, if they do not want to be found, they won't be found. Fleer, trail cams, night vision, these are easily avoided, especially if the people using them don't really know what they're looking for. Everything in the woods sees you putting the camera on the tree and walking away. Also, electronics disrupt the wild. So all animal species are aware and then choose to avoid us or become curious and get closer. Also, making casts of the prints they make might make them stop making prints. That's what a human would do stop walking in open soft areas so as to stop making tracks. The witness accounts I've seen, heard, and read all sound like the one that was spotted was either distracted by a younger one, or sick, or wounded, or otherwise preoccupied, and the people that spotted them rarely have loud powerful camera equipment with them, otherwise they're never seen. Are they all hoaxes? Well, that's possible if the hoaxers themselves are extremely large cross-country marathon runners with very high temperature tolerance and no intention of being famous for their amazing feats of crossing mountain ranges wearing gorilla costumes that have dermal ridges molded into the feet and hands and leaving huge tracks for dozens of miles. Are they real? I don't know. They are fun to draw, however, and real or not, they have been a part of human culture and heritage and folklore for many generations, and I'm sure will be for many generations to come.